What is up people, Dunna here, and you can probably tell from the smile on my face that we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite subjects today, camera backpacks. And specifically, this is the PGY Tech One Mo 2, the updated version from the One Mo. It is one of the most feature-rich camera bags that are out there on the market right now. But just because it's got a lot of features doesn't mean that it's necessarily the right bag for everyone, so we're gonna do a deep dive and try and help you figure out whether this might make sense for you. I've split up the video into a bunch of different chapters and you can find those down below if you want to hop around a little bit. Other than that, secure the cup and let's get into it. First things first, the question that you might have is why are there two bags on the table? And that is because the PGY Tech One Mo 2 comes not only with the main backpack, but it also comes with this little shoulder bag. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but there are also some different options that you can get. What we're looking at here is the 35 liter option in black. That's the only color option for this size, but there is a 25 liter that comes in both black and a gray camo, if you're into that kind of camo look. While the 25 liters do have some differences from the 35 liter, they do still come with the shoulder bag. As far as pricing goes, the black 25 liter goes for 219 US, the gray camo 25 liter goes for 239 US, and then the 35 liter in black goes for 259 US. So they're definitely not the cheapest camera bags that you can find out there, but they're also nowhere near the most expensive. All right, let's talk a little bit about comfort. They've updated the back panel from the first version, so it's got extra padding on there, and the padding is now ventilated in a very specific way with this kind of mesh layer on top, but you can also see all the little grooves in the cushion itself, and that's really nice. I was a little bit worried at first about being able to feel this strap against my back, but once you get the bag on, you can't feel that at all. Another thing that I was a little bit worried about were these straps, because they're not quite as squishy or cushiony as you would hope they would be, but what they've actually done is balance nicely the amount of squish that they have with how pliable they are. A lot of straps, if there's too much going on in them, if they're kind of packed too full of squishy stuff, then they get actually stiff and they don't move with your body the way that they should. These ones, when you put the bag on, even when it's nice and full, still feel really good. The fabric on here is also really soft and nice, so if it's touching your skin anywhere, it's not gonna be chafing as much as some other materials might. And all of that can also be said for these waist straps as well. They fit really nicely around the waist. They've got a little bit of extra padding compared to the shoulder straps, and they've also got these kind of channels that help with moving around and actually form to your body. And then on top of that, the waist straps are also detachable. So if you're not a waist strap person or you just don't have that much in the bag that you need them, you can just take them right off. The shoulder straps also have top loader adjustments so that you can change the shape of how they come over your shoulders and you can kind of adjust where the weight is sitting. And speaking of all that, you've also got a removable chest strap. Right now it's attached to one side, so it's kind of out of the way, but you just pull on it like that. And then tucked on the right side, you can see the loops there. It slides in there and then it holds really sturdy. So we've got adjustability for the shoulder straps, for the waist straps, and for a chest strap. So really maximum as far as being able to adjust it to fit and take the weight out of the places that you don't want it. And like I said, just like the waist straps, if you wanna take this all the way off, if you're not interested in using it, you can just take that off and you can use it somewhere else on the bag or you can just store it away. And finally, for comfort, there is a certain amount of rigidity to the back panel that your back is touching against, which I find really helps with the comfort of backpacks like this. I find if a backpack is too floppy in that department, it isn't really comfortable. So I like having either a nice rigid frame around it, or in this case, it kind of feels like there's a big plastic piece throughout the entire back, which is nice. Here's a quick look at it on. I'm six foot one, so the 35 liter works pretty well for me. If you're a smaller person, the 35 is probably gonna be a really big bag. So using that waist strap, I can get all of the weight off of my shoulders. Right now the backpack is empty, so it wouldn't quite be like this, but there's basically nothing touching. Like I can put my whole hand underneath my strap on the shoulder there. And these waist straps have little elastics on them to keep the straps out of the way. And I'm not feeling any discomfort because of this buckle, even when it's loaded up. All right, next let's talk about the aesthetics and the materials of this bag. As far as the way the bag looks, I quite like it. It's got the little red accents on the black, which my inner emo child is really excited about. And the materials that they've used to accomplish this are all rugged and durable. 
I've beat this thing up and it has basically nothing to show for it. It looks almost like the day that I got it. All of the materials are weather resistant. They call them splash proof, but it does also come with a rain cover. So if you're out there in torrential downpour, you're gonna wanna put that over just to make sure. And on the bottom, they've got this kind of extra durable rubbery material. This is the spot where you're gonna be putting the bag down most of the time. So that's a really nice feature down there. All of the attachment points and the handles and the stitching on this bag seem to be done really nicely. I've been putting it through the ringer full of gear and it hasn't stretched out or I haven't lost any seams or anything like that. It's been doing a really nice job. Again, it's basically still like the day that I got it. We've got weather sealed YKK zippers with theft deterrent. So they've got these little extra loops that you can put your zipper pulls through so that people can't get at them. But the problem is that they've put these zipper pulls on there that are really stiff and I can't actually get that into the theft deterrent. So it ends up being basically useless. I'm sure if I really, really squish this, I could get it through there, but it's so difficult to do that it's basically useless. So unfortunately that is definitely a point off for me. It was a cool idea, just not executed well. But speaking of cool ideas, let's take a look at some of the other cool outside features and functionality. There are attachment points all over this bag. There are a bunch on the front here that you can use on this kind of webbing. There's this guy over on the side here. We've got four more up on the top and we've got four more on the bottom. The waist straps also have attachment points so you can hook things on there if you really want to. There's one on either strap up close to the top so you could hook something in there if you really wanted to. And then specifically on the left-hand side strap, you've got these two spots that are made for capture clips or PGY Tech makes their beetle that you can attach onto there that you can then put your camera onto. And this is really nice that it's in front of the strap so that you're not trying to clamp the capture clip or the beetle clip around around the strap because then that digs into your shoulder. Having that clip sit in the front means that it's going to be padded between your shoulder and the actual clip itself. And the PGY Tech Beetle Clip is actually really nice too. One of my favorite accessories because there are no screws involved. You just loosen this piece here and then when you're ready to snap it on, now it's like, it's not going anywhere. So now I can attach my camera using the beetle clip there and it'll sit on my left shoulder. On the right strap, they've gone with something a little bit different. They've actually got a zipper here and this is a little phone pocket and it's kind of stretchy. So if your phone's a little bit bigger, it should still be able to fit in there. I've got an iPhone 14 Pro and it fits in there, no problem. And if it is a little bit bigger, you can see it just kind of stretches out to the side a little bit. So shouldn't be an issue even if you're carrying a giant phone like a lot of people are nowadays. As far as handles go, there's one up at the top so you can carry it upright if you want. There's one on the side and then there's one on the back that also acts as a luggage pass-through. And all of the handles seem to have about the same amount of padding. They're this kind of webbing material and they're quite comfortable to hold. On the right side of the bag, we've got our water bottle or tripod pocket. And this is one part of the bag that I am not a huge fan of. It's got this kind of wrinkled look to it. And I don't find that the aesthetics are really nice. And then there's just this one kind of elastic off to the side that will stretch out, but it doesn't quite go big enough to fit the tripods that I like to carry in there. I think this is one place on this bag where they could have done some more work to make this a little bit better. Above that, there is a strap. So if you do put a tripod in there, you can strap it down. This attachment point is kind of annoying. Find it a little bit difficult to get on and off, especially if there's a tripod in there. And then you can attach it here if you just kind of want to set it aside. But the other end of it is not detachable, which I think is a, a huge miss. There are lots of these attachment points all over the place, so why not make this one detachable too? And then you would just have an extra strap. But it does come with a couple of extra straps like this that are detachable, so you can attach your tripod to either the bottom if you wanna use those attachment points or to the top if you want to use those ones. And one other feature that I know is really important to a lot of people, it stands up on its own. There's enough structure going on at the bottom with that extra rigid kind of material down there as well. So you can stand this thing up even when it's packed full of gear. Next, let's take a look at some of the outer pockets because this bag actually has quite a few. So staying on the side with the water bottle pocket, we've also got this extra pocket up here. If we undo that, 
we can see that there are a couple of attachment points in here. These are elastic keys, so you can attach things there if you want. We've got this one little mesh pocket, and then there is a zipper pocket in behind those attachment points. So this could be for your extra hard drives, pencils, notebook, whatever you want to throw in there. And then if we go over to the other side, we've got a similar pocket up on the top. We've got a mesh zipper pocket on the side. Then we've got this kind of like super soft, a little bit elasticy material. We've got two pockets on the bottom and one bigger one that goes in behind there. This could be good for cables or your sunglasses or something like that if you wanted. And then down at the bottom of the bag, We've got an opening here that actually goes inside the bag. So you can do that thing where you sling it over your shoulder and grab your camera out there so you don't miss the shot. And then on the door of that, there's actually another pocket. And it's got this interesting little battery organizer thing. So there's a spot for three batteries and these are a little bit stretchy. So whatever size batteries you need can probably fit in there. And then there are these little switches that you can change from green to red so that you can let yourself know whether that battery is dead or whether it's good to go. And then finally, on the top of the bag, on the 35 liter, we've got one more pocket. I'm pretty sure on the 25 liter, this pocket doesn't exist. And it is another access inside the bag, as well as there's just one little pocket here that you can put, you know, your keys or something in there. Really quick access up at the top. Now, speaking of pockets, this bag has a special pocket on the front that expands it. So let's take a look at that. If we grab this zipper down here and put it all the way around kind of from the bottom to the bottom again, we can pull this out and you can see we've got this kind of expanded area. Now, if we do it like this, where it's like the V they call it, this just gave us seven liters of extra space. We can also take that zipper and go all the rest of the way around so that it expands both at the top and bottom. And now we've got 10 liters of extra space. And I believe on the 25 liter version, you're getting five and eight extra liters, depending on which way you do it. While they do claim that this bag is international carry-on friendly, I think that once you get this fully expanded, you might be pushing it just, just a little bit. So just be careful with that. If you're gonna be traveling with this bag, I don't wanna make any promises. And then once we get this thing expanded, we can open it from the top. One zipper only goes down about halfway. And then the other one goes all the way around. Now, you can kind of get at this from the top. So if you leave this kind of halfway, you could use this as kind of like a top loading area. Or if you unzip it all the way around, you can clamshell it from the side like this and get full access to it. This is the rain cover that it comes with. These are the two accessory straps that comes with the bag. Inside this top area, we've got these two mesh pockets on the top. You can use those as kind of quick access because you can get pretty easily into that if you've got that top part expanded. And then at the bottom, there's even a little sticker here, or a little stitched in piece that has a little gimbal on it. So the idea is that you're supposed to slide in your gimbal in there and it works pretty darn well. And then on the other side, we've got a pocket that has a zipper at the top here. It only goes down about halfway. So it's leaving room for where the gimbal is going to be taking up most of the space or whatever you put in that bottom part but also in general, you can just use this entire space as extra space. So if you wanna throw a packing cube or a jacket or your clothes, if you're using this as kind of the travel compartment part of your backpack, so you basically end up with 10 liters for travel and the other 35 for your camera gear. Having this front area kind of separate from your camera gear, I find really handy. And the fact that you can kind of zip it away when you're not using it is really nice too. One thing that I didn't mention before is that all the zippers on this bag work really well too. Too. They're super smooth, nothing gets in the way. They don't have trouble with any of the corners or anything like that. So that's a really nice feature because you can get at things really easy without frustration. But now that we've taken a look at all the kind of extra compartments and pockets, let's take a look at the main camera compartment. So we've got a dual zipper that goes down from the top and it opens clamshell style from that bottom point. On the door itself, we've got a padded laptop and iPad sleeve. The laptop sleeve is gigantic. Uh, I can't think of a laptop that would be big enough that it wouldn't fit in there. And then the iPad is also quite big. So I think pretty much no matter what type of laptop or iPad you have, they should fit in here in the 35 liter anyway. And then there is this little elastic that you can use to attach like so. 
and that'll hold them in place. It's kind of a weird system, but it does work. And I know a lot of people have problems with other bag companies use Velcro in that spot. They don't like that very much. So that should hold your laptop in there, no problem. And then taking a look at the main camera compartment, when you get it, it's not set up like this. It's set up so that you could have a big long lens coming down the middle. And then the shoulder bag is actually sitting kind of in this bottom half of the entire bag. So you can use this almost as like a tech cube or a packing cube or whatever to kind of take up that bottom space, put your drone in it, and then you can take it out when you don't need it and it just leaves the bottom empty. One thing that I really like about this camera area that I find as a problem in some other bags is that there's very little kind of hangover. Sometimes camera bags will kind of push in on the corners and it makes it so that things are rounded and you can't slip things underneath. This is nice and open all the way around so you're not worried about that. You can get things right into those corners if you want, meaning that you can just fill the entire space, which makes a big difference. It comes with a decent amount and variety of dividers so that you can switch this up however you want. I'm not even really using all of them right now. This one was just kind of sitting aside and these two long ones are just kind of doing the same job right now. All of the dividers have a good balance between rigidity, flexibility, and enough padding to make sure that you feel comfortable putting your gear in here, like it's gonna be protected. We've got some of these smaller ones that you can divide your different sections. There's another one that I'm not using there. It comes with one Velcro strap that you can put over things if you want or to hold the two dividers together. Some of the dividers also have this kind of shelf layer so that you can put things underneath and then have a dividing layer between to make sure that they're safe, which is really nice. Two of these longer ones are a little bit more standard. They've got the ability to fold so you can do different shapes with them if you wanted to do kind of an L or whatever. And there's lots of Velcro points to make sure that it's holding in place where it needs to be. And then the other two long ones are extra rigid. There's this tube in there or something at the top. You could put something on top of this and use it as a shelf. And the other thing that's nice about these super rigid ones, these kind of shelf divider things, is that they've got this kind of butterfly thing going on at the top with the Velcro that allows you to connect connect it over top of that outside pocket. So when I open that pocket, there's no Velcro sticking to the pocket. There's just a small strip of fabric above that pocket so that you can have this butterfly attachment, make sure that it's still holding really nice, but it's not stopping you from getting in that pocket when you need to get your gear out quickly from the side. And on the very inside in this bottom corner, you'll notice that there's this little tag here and underneath that tag, inside the fabric, there's actually a little pocket there where you can put an air tag. So you can kind of hide an air tag away. So if somebody were to steal your bag, you could find your bag again and they wouldn't notice that there's an air tag there because you'd probably tuck this tag up away with that air tag inside the pocket. On the PGY Tech website, they said that you can fit three bodies and six lenses or two bodies and eight lenses in here. I have no doubt of that whatsoever. I think you can fit so much stuff in here. It's also really nice and deep. So if if you want to stand your lenses up like that, you can, no problem. This is a 24 to 70 and it doesn't even reach the top. This is my Sigma 100 to 400 and it fits, even with the lens hood this direction, it fits in there no problem from side to side. You probably even get it in there with a body on if you had the lens hood switched around in the kind of storage way. And if you do have a bigger lens than this, it most likely will fit in lengthways if you can kind of set your dividers up to have it that way. The one thing that I find that this is missing is some kind of a top pocket. So what I do is I actually use this top opening rather than to get a long lens out of the top, like I think what they intended it for, I actually use it to kind of create its own separate top pocket area. I'm gonna do it with a different divider this time, but let's set this thing back up. So now I've got one of those hard dividers on the top. So that's creating that top pocket that I can access from up here. And in order to get the right width for my pockets, I'm just gonna use a camera in there as kind of a measurement. There 
we go, something like that. So I've got kind of three lanes here, two that can fit longer lenses with bodies on them. And then I've got my top pocket here that I can access through the top portion. I'll probably have to readjust once I'm not using all of my camera equipment to shoot this video. And like I mentioned before, normally that shoulder bag would go in this bottom portion, but I didn't find that I liked using it enough to kind of keep it in here. I preferred to have everything out and accessible separately rather than a bunch of stuff in that bag that I could take out sometimes. But one thing that I found out is that if I did want to, I could technically fit the shoulder bag not in on its back like this, like it was intended, but on its side and just kind of squish that top portion down and it does fit in. There's a bit of a bulge happening at the bottom here, but it does work. So if I did still want to, I could use that as well. And speaking of which, let's talk about this shoulder bag. So basically it's made of the same kind of materials. We've got a bunch of attachment points on the front if you wanna use those. We've got a handle on the back that also acts as a luggage pass-through if you want to. We've got attachment points here and here. So we've got four there that you can attach those extra accessory straps to. There's a small pocket on the top that's nice for things like your keys or your wallet or whatever you want in there. And then when you open it up, we've got a couple of pockets on the inside of the lid and then the main compartment. This is the strap that comes with it. So in here, we've got a couple of different dividers that you can use. The dividers for this are also a little bit different. They divide the bag into sections like this, but then they've also got this kind of little piece that divides the smaller section in half and then the top part that folds over. So there's lots of different things that you can do with these, or you can pull them out and use them in the main bag if you wanted to. But one of the cool things about this bag is that there's also an extra zipper. <laughs> And if you zip that all the way, it actually extends this so it gets even taller. So you've got a little extra room. If you've got taller lenses or if you've got a taller camera or something that you want to get in there. So not only is the main backpack expandable, but so is the shoulder bag. And there are two main ways that you can use this. If you use the two top attachment, it becomes a shoulder bag something like that. But if you use the two kind of side attachments here, you can also wear it like a giant fanny pack if you really want to, or a waist pack if you prefer that terminology. Again, I didn't find a whole lot of use for this bag. I kind of preferred the setup without it, but it is really nice that it comes with it, especially if you're someone who brings your drone a lot. I think that's really where this would stand out, but you could also use it as like a lunch bag or whatever you can think of. And hiding all the way down there in the dark, there is also an air tag holder, a little hidden air tag spot, so you can put one in this bag as well. So now you know pretty much everything Thing there is to know about the PG YTAC 1 Mo 2, but from a practical standpoint, what did I like the most and what didn't I like about this bag? Starting off with the things that I liked, this bag has a lot more features than a lot of other bags on the market. It is super versatile. There's so much you can do with it. And I really like the outside pockets, especially. There's extra organization that goes into that. And I love having easy access to all of my different things. Once you got a system set up so that you knew where everything was, this is really handy to have. And on top of that, everything is included. There's no sell-ups, there's no different package prices or anything like that you get everything with the kit all at that one price. Personally, I'm a fan of that kind of tech future aesthetic. The black and red is really cool to me, as well as it was really comfortable and it stands up on its own. I love that all the zippers are smooth. There are no snags around the corners or anything like that. You can get in and out of the bag super easy. And then of course that expandable pocket on the front that you can add the extra seven or 10 liters of space in there for travel or for your gimbal or for whatever you need is pretty awesome to be able to kind of transform this bag from a fairly large everyday bag into a travel bag is pretty awesome. Now, as far as what I didn't like, let's start with those theft deterrent zippers. That was a huge fail in my opinion. Unfortunately, it's a cool idea, but it just didn't work here. I've seen it on a couple of different bags and it's really simple, it's really nice, but it just didn't get implemented in a way that actually makes sense here because the zipper pulls are too big and too stiff to actually get them through there. This one non-removable strap on the side is kind of bugging me for whatever reason. I know that you're gonna need it there if you're gonna have a tripod in the side, but the fact that it's the only place where there's a strap that's non-removable with the exception of your actual shoulder straps, 
just kind of bugs me. Why didn't they just make it removable? Of course, as I mentioned before, this water bottle pocket kind of sucks in my opinion. I don't like the aesthetics of it. I don't like the way that it works. I don't like that this elastic feels like it's gonna die at some point. It's just, it's just not for me. I'm a big advocate for having tripod and water bottle pockets on both sides of the bag. I like to have a tripod and a water bottle. In this case, we only have the one on the one side and I don't like it. So maybe it's better that they didn't add it to the other side, I guess. And the only other thing is that it's actually so large that sometimes it's kind of overkill. If it's just a daily bag or I'm going on a hike or something like that, it's usually way too much space for what I actually need to carry. And then you end up with a lot of empty space. And sometimes that means that things can move around in there. And I don't like that very much. So it's just not necessarily a bag that I need very often. It's really good at what it does, like for travel and for when you need to carry a ton of gear to a project or something like that. But for my kind of main projects, for me personally, I need like a couple of bodies and two or three lenses. And then there's all this extra space in here that just ends up not getting used. That's a me problem, but maybe some of you will run into the same thing. So in the end, bang for buck, this is a great bag. You get a lot of features for what you pay for. It. It's not necessarily the cheapest bag in the world, but it's definitely cheaper than a lot of bags that are out there that come with a lot less features and don't like come with an extra bag with them on the side. So if you're looking for a larger bag where you can carry a ton of stuff or maybe for your travel needs so that you can have an all in one travel bag and you don't have to have two separate ones, this might be a great option for you. If you want to look into it more or maybe pick one up, there is a link down in the description. You can go check it out. And on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.